Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for a new season of The Real Housewives of Potomac. And this is season nine, and this is episode one. And it's called A Crash Course in Deflection. And um, by the way, yes, I'm not on camera. I'm going to state the obvious, but um, for those who follow any of my other content, um, I have been trying to figure out how I was going to do all these house, um, housewife shows, review all the housewife shows and produce, you know, content for that. And I've decided that there are going to be some times where I'm just not going to be on camera because it is just a lot to review. Like when we went from feasts, we, I mean, went from famine to like feasts, like <laughs> almost like being overly fed. So and there's actually, I think The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is going to be coming up somewhat soon. And The Real Housewives of Atlanta is going to be coming up somewhat soon, too. So it's just a lot of content. So um, that's the reason why I'm not on camera today. And also, too, I um, I burned my social battery yesterday. So I'm kind of peopled out, <laughs> truthfully. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode starts off really cute and, um, and oh, by the way, this season premiere was solid. Um, I am looking forward to it cause I don't think it's going to be as dark or as toxic as it has been before. I think it's going to be a little bit lighter of a season. Um, and it kind of had to be, I feel like after last season, certain people were warned Giselle, um, and her losing her a a spoon coon. That's is Robin off the show it sent i think multiple messages were sent to her that that they need to fix this um which is why i did decide i am going to review this i wasn't sure just because last season was just so upsetting because this is like you know one of the few franchises like that's predominantly black franchise and i love that black sundays are back <laughs> so i was hoping for the best and so therefore so far um things seem like they're gonna be good but anyway Let's get into the episode. So it starts with Giselle. She is heading over to Karen's house. And we know that the huge storyline of probably most of the season is going to be Karen and her getting her second DUI. And I think that is one thing that Bravo has not really mentioned much. They said, I mean, they mentioned the DUI, but this is actually her second one. So it is a little different than the Shannon's scenario because it's her second one <laughs> so um that's kind of a huge thing and um i'll be honest so far so so far although i love karen and i know a lot of us do i am disappointed on how she's handling it um and yeah so we'll see how the season goes with that but anyway giselle does come to pick up karen and um Giselle is trying to refrain from being as shady. You could tell she's trying to refrain from it, but you know, it's still there. That's, that is her. Um, so they go, so, um, they go in her car and they head off to get like breakfast together. And, um, Giselle is actually genuinely trying to ask about the situation. And Karen has made it very clear from the jump once they're once they're seated at the breakfast place that she's not going to talk about it. She refuses to talk about it um, because, well, she still has to go to court. So part of it is valid. She really does still have to go to court. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, the reality is because it is her second one, she actually could be facing some jail time. And I also think, I also believe she was um, caught driving without like. Um, a license. I mean, there's other things that were involved in this second go around. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so while they're sitting there and they're talking, um, Giselle mentions that she wants to throw her a birthday party because her birthday's coming up. And that actually lets me know they must have kind of picked up the, the filming was still at the same time, like it always is, like every season. Um, but anyway, so they go ahead and, um, Giselle gives like, um, Karen gives the okay that, yeah, you can go ahead and throw me a party. And I do think Giselle wasn't really being as shady. I mean, I think, yes, yeah, she was partially being shady asking the questions, but I think she actually was asking out her concern and what Karen's response was to the whole thing. She does, she blames it on 
things are going on with her. She says like, you know, she's still grieving from losing both her parents. And then she also mentions her and Ray are not doing well. And although those things are heavy, there's no excuse. This is uh, considering the fact that this is her second one. This is really like not okay. And yeah, I, I am curious on how this season's going to go when it comes to this, but the, um, the scene ends where Giselle agrees to throw this party for her, for her birthday. And also, um, the wait staff, the, the server basically was acting like a PR for Karen saying, oh, she doesn't drink whenever she's here. Trying to like kind of help change the narrative of her being potentially a drunk. Um, because throughout the seasons and years, it has been alleged that she is that. She is a drunk. And clearly this, what happened did not help. So that's how that ended. And Giselle was like, did you pay him or something? <laughs> she said that in her confessional, but of course not right there and directly. So, but anyway, that is how the scene ends. So next we have, um, oh, also the other thing that did happen with this scene, I forgot to mention, um, the discussion of who to invite was part of it. So she wanted to invite Vivian and then Stacy, who was a new housewife that we're going to meet. And um, also the other conversation was Giselle and Karen were talking about Mia and what's going on with that situation between Mia, Gordon, and Inc. And they were being super shady when it came to that whole thing because Mia's really, really tall and Ink is shorter. And so they're making comments about how she takes pictures with him. And they just had a lot of questions. Uh, and as do the rest of us. But uh, yeah. So anyway, that was the other thing that was mentioned. I just almost forgot about that. But moving on from there, we then actually do see Mia with her family. And they're like in the park and it's her and Gordon. Um, they actually are co-parenting together with the kids and we find out, yes, they're still separated. So the, the divorce, they are going through with the divorce. Um, Gordon now lives in the same building as Mia and, um, it makes it kind of, and Mia says it makes it awkward because you know, she's trying to kind of move on with her, with her man stuff. And it's kind of weird because they're like in the same building. And then also in this same scene, as we're talking about co-parenting and doing a good job of that and trying to work through that, um, the subject of Mia's son, Jeremiah, getting a haircut with ink, like going to the barber shop because Gordon's not with that idea. And so it w goes from that to Mia mentions getting a paternity test because of what happened last season. Gordon put it out there that he wasn't, that he had questions on why Inc. was questioning um, Jeremiah being potentially his son. And so he's like, well, if you're gonna put it out there, then let's do the paternity test. And that's, that's what Mia's saying. And Gordon's like just getting very, very visibly upset and just like, why do you think there's a doubt that you think there's a reason? And Gordon's like, I don't understand why you want to do this. And, and Mia's like, well, you're the one who put it out there. And the conversation did not end well, but that is kind of how, so the scene kind of ended abruptly. And we can already tell where this is going this season. It's going to be messy and toxic. And all I can say is I actually do feel bad for the kids. And it gets mentioned at the end that the kids, you know, are the priority. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I want to feel that way, but it's just, it's getting really messy. So there's that. Next, we have Ashley and she's meeting with her attorney and now the new thing is after two years she's finally ready to get this divorce done and she wants to start dating and they show these um scenes of her trying to date um a couple different guys um and so she's basically with her attorney discussing mediation and she wants to have um, primary custody of her kids and um 
We're not sure if he's going to agree with her or not, but that's what they're going for, that he agrees. Now, as far as Ashley is concerned, I, part of me only thinks that this divorce is happening now because, and I don't think it would have happened without her getting off of that show. So for those who are not aware, um, Ashley, Giselle, Shannon, Vador, and I forgot who the other single housewife is. They're going to be on the spinoff housewife show, like a dating show. And part of me is thinking, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I have a tough time believing anything that comes from, from Ashley. Um, by the way, Ashley looked good in this scene. Um, I always forget how much I don't care for her because she is, she's a gorgeous woman. I must say that, especially ever since she got that makeover last year, chef's kiss. But anyway, we'll see if she really is going to have much else going on because let's face it, Ashley for the past three or four seasons has been coasting. Um, she really hasn't had anything going on. So we'll see what, how, how that ends up. Next, we have Wendy and Eddie, and Wendy is packing her things that she just got, got from the school into um, their home office because we find out that Wendy, after really debating it for the past, I think, four or five years, she mentioned, she is going to um, put in her resignation from the university because um, I believe she worked at John Hopkins University. Um, as a professor. Um, and so we just see that she's kind of going through those emotions and navigating it. And Eddie's definitely being encouraging like he always is and says like, hey, you know, if you, you know, once you do this, you know, let's, let's, let's celebrate, you know, that this chapter of your life is over with and we're moving on to the next. And um, she, we do see that she writes the email and she sends it and she kind of freaks out briefly. And then the thing that I think is <laughs> what Wendy's worried about, cause she mentions afterwards, she has not told her mom yet. And so she's afraid that her mom is going to freak out about the situation. Um, mainly because, you know, I mean, Wendy is Nigerian and one thing about Nigerian parents, they do not play about education and higher education, especially. So, um, and they actually showed a, a previous, some scene from before. I don't remember if it was this season or previous season of her actually talking to her mom about possibly resignating and her mom wasn't having it. So the fact that she's doing it anyway, we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, so I think that's one of the little side um, things that we're going to get from her this season. One thing I must mention is this episode, Kiana, who's also a new housewife, she was not in this episode at all. Um, so we'll hopefully see her. I, I'm assuming we're going to see her in the next episode, but I did notice that she was not in this episode at all. Um, yeah, so there's that. But anyway... The next thing, though, is Karen. She's going dress shopping at um, her friend Vivian's store because um, we find out that her friend has a dress store. And her friend Vivian is kind of actually the connection um, between her and the newest housewife, Stacy. And Stacy meets them there. Um, and we find out that Stacy met Karen last year at an event and they became fast friends. Um, also, the other thing that we learned about Stacy is that she used to work for QVC and she quit. Um, and at the time when she was working for QVC, she lived in Philly. Um, and then now she's back at the, in the D, um, DMV. And this is where she, she's originally from. And um, Karen, um, while that, while we get the intro, she Karen shares that she is a little concerned about how this party's going to go because it's Giselle throwing it. And also based off of even the video invite that she did, because the name of the party is um, it's Giselle's Hattitude Party. And she has these silly hats for if you get an ad. If you get an attitude, basically, you know, she has to, you, you're going to be wearing one of those silly hats. And so that is Karen's concern is the shadiness that is Giselle when it comes to this throwing of the party. And, um, yeah. So then from there, then 
we see that, um, so while this is happening, um, Stacy real quick goes to change um, in one of the dresses because we also find out that Stacy actually has like a Met Gala event or some sort that she's going to, an event where she does need like a formal dress because this is like a formal dress shop. And um, basically Vivian and Karen notices that she does not have her wedding wing on and that um, kind of gives them pause. But immediately, as soon as she's back out there, they ask her about, like, um, what's going on? Why don't you have your wedding ring on? And this is where we find out that Stacy's actually has been separated for over a year and she's going through a divorce. And it's actually the reason why she has moved back to the DMV. It has to do with her getting a divorce. And um, we do also then see that she has a daughter with her soon-to-be ex-husband, who's, like, I guess, a German investor of some sort. And... I guess my only thing that that kind of gets me about this, and I just kind of want to know your thoughts on it, is she has all the other credentials to be possibly a very good housewife, but this is just another housewife, particularly on this franchise, that is not going to be a housewife. She's going to be divorced. So... I guess I thought we were going to have more housewives who are actually legitimately married. But I guess the criteria is if even if you're formally married, that works too. But it just kind of does make things. It makes the show a different show when you have most people that are on the show that are not married. So that's, I guess, I guess. I don't know how I feel about it. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments. But anyway, so then from there. They actually do, Vivian and Stacy. they ask, like, hey, is it okay if we're drinking in front of you? Because they were having champagne as they were, like, you know, doing their dress shopping. And Karen was drinking water. And Karen's reasoning was, oh, I'm on medication right now. That's why I'm not drinking right now. But, yeah, I mean, and another time I'll, I'll get turned up. And I'm just kind of like, girl, read the room, number one. Number two, <sighs> I guess for me, what gets me is, and even with the Shannon thing, I kind of feel a way about that too, because both of these women are grown, grown women. There's no reason to not to be drinking and driving in this day and age, number one. Number two, this is, I'm going to keep saying it, as, as many times as Karen tries to make this a lighter situation than what it is, this is her second DUI, not her first one. And your first one is a misdemeanor. Second one is a felony. It, it, it's really, really a serious situation. So I don't want her to make light of it because it's, you know, that at this point, you need to look into getting some help because um, this is not acceptable. And I guess I would have a different stance if she was taking some type of accountability. And right now, I'm not seeing it. So, and also too, this is again, the second one. I'm deciding Karen on this and hopefully we do get more from her than excuses and deflection. But right now that's what we're getting. Okay, so it is the day of the event, um, Karen's party that Giselle is throwing. And Giselle of course arrives first cause she's setting up for the party. And then Ashley is actually the first guest to arrive and she, shows up with a super shady gift basket including non out like water uber passes like whole bunch of things are tied to her dui and then she does ask giselle like have you talked to her how is she doing about all this and um giselle did confess she's like i mean i would i wanted to be the one who gave this type of a gift but i just i wanted to leave it alone and but it seems like Ashley is set to task to get get on her about this. And we already knew that Ashley was going to do this. Like, we're, we're not surprised. This is Ashley. If there's mess to be had, she's going to be the one who does it. Um, so anyway, so then next, besides her, though, then Giselle does state that she did invite um, Wendy which is a big deal because we know Wendy and Giselle have not seen it for each other for, I guess, this is going to be three seasons now. Um, this this is actually going to be the fourth season. 
that they haven't really been cool. And um, Giselle does state in her confessional that she's hoping to resolve things. And again, this is the producers. I don't think I don't think Giselle would have ever resolved it. Yeah, I don't think she would have resolved it if it was up to her and her only. But anyway, so then next we have Jacqueline and she shows up. Um, and she is another official friend of again. So this is the second time where she's a friend of. I am kind of wondering why they're not having her be full time. But maybe we, you know, we don't really know enough about her for her to be full time. And maybe also she doesn't want that. But anyway, Jacqueline shows up next and she's back. And then from there, we find out with Jacqueline that um, Mia is inviting her friend Stacy, uh, no, not Stacy, um, Jazzy, Jazzy. Um, and Jazzy, she actually shows up next with Mia and Mia is introducing her as her friend. Whether that's actually true or not, this whole other thing, because the way they mentioned how they met each other, it doesn't sound like they really are friends in real life. We already know on these shows, sometimes they do the introduction thing, and that's how that goes. But anyway, um, she's very, very pretty, though. And um, we do get to learn a little bit more about her once she does sit down. Um, but yeah, she's gorgeous. I'm looking forward to know more about her. Um, but anyway, after that, then we see that Wendy arrives next. Um, Wendy does kind of state the obvious. She's like, look, I'm not sure about um, Giselle's motives right now. So I'm not going to see this as an olive branch yet. I think we need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to actually clear the air. But in the meantime, I'll be cordial and keep it cute, which is what happened here. Um, they didn't really talk to each other too much, but they weren't rude or anything like that. So that's what happened there. Um, anyway, so then um, this is where we then do learn about um, Jazzy. And Jazzy is a flight attendant. And so that's why she's not really around so much in the DMV area often because of her, her job being a flight attendant. And she is currently dating um an nfl player and they did introduce who who he was i'm i'm not familiar with him because i don't really watch football like that anymore but he plays for the kansas city chiefs and then um <laughs> wendy asked a fun question like well have you met taylor swift and um she was like yes i actually have and she was like okay let's spill some tea about that later on because uh, you know, we find out that wendy's a swifty so there's that um but yeah um, it was nice to get to know a little bit more about her in this scene a little bit. So they're still waiting on Karen. Um, she's fashionably late, the guest of honor herself. And um, so I believe Giselle asked if uh, Mia has talked to um, Gordon. And she says, yes, yes, we have. And then after that, then, oh, no, she asked Mia, have, has she talked to Karen? I'm sorry, Karen. Because last season, Mia and Karen were not getting along at all. And I don't think they even really resolved anything dur during the reunion. But anyway, so then um, Jacqueline said that she has talked to Karen. And um, Mia and Jacqueline kind of tag teamed this and shared that when she talked to Karen, she sounded a little tipsy over the phone. And they're all like, wait, what? Because be mindful that all this is being filmed right after the DUI. Like, it just happened. Um, anyway. So, right on cue, though, Karen arrives. Along with Vivian, her friend Vivian, and Stacy. Um, everyone is exchanging pleasantries and kind of getting to know each other a little bit. We find out, though, that Stacy and, um, and Wendy actually somewhat are friendly with each other. Like they don't really know each other like that, but they've met each other throughout the years um, due to like some of the social circles of the DMV. Um, and they show pictures of them from like 2018. So um, yeah, Stacy's been around. She really is the real deal when it comes to being in part of the social scene of the DMV. Anyway, and then basically, Everyone goes and have a seat, and then the shade starts. I mean, just like right on cue. And um, the way the shade starts, um, 
they introduced the drinks that they're offering. And one of the drinks is called the non-alcoholic Grand Dame. And Giselle's the one who named all these drinks. And she basically is making fun of um, Karen's Grand Dame persona of being prim and proper, but then yet, you know, what just happened. And um, Karen doesn't budge. She poker faces it up. She's like, whatever. Um, because this is what she expects from um, Giselle. And then from there, then Giselle does go on to explain the theme of the party. And this is the had the two party. And if you have an attitude, you're going to get one of those ugly hats. And then, but she actually does state that she, uh, everyone got these custom made hats and the hats are named after themes of people. And she's going to provide the hat. And the hats were shady, but they were fun shady and not like, you know, as shady as Giselle can get because she, she can get horrible shady. This is fun shady. So Karen's hat that she gives to her is a Hollywood hat, but it's super cute. And um, Giselle puts it. And then after that, after she gives her the hat, she literally puts it on the floor. She's like, well... So before you got here, um, people had a lot of questions for you, Karen. And I figured, you know, let's wait until you're here and you can answer the questions yourself. And Karen's like, yeah, put it on the floor. What, what's going on? And Jacqueline goes first, well, tries to ask a question, but she doesn't even really get that far. She basically premises it like, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you didn't hurt others, this, that, and this, and uh, And mind you, the way they're talking about it, they're assuming everyone knows what happened. And Stacy, I'm looking at Stacy's face all the entire time. I feel like she doesn't really know what's happening or what has happened. So I'm kind of confused. <laughs> um, I guess we'll find out next episode what she already knew versus what she doesn't know. And so before she goes on to even ask the question, Karen deflects right away and goes into like full on mob wives mentality she's like i just want to know who are my real friends and who are not my real friends because i can't i'm not gonna be hanging out with no fake bitches like if you're not real like basically deflecting and saying like you know she needs people at this moment through what she's going through but not really taking any accountability so yeah and everyone catches it and they're just like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> yikes. Uh, Cause it did kind of come out of nowhere, but Karen, if anything, deflecting is what she does well. Ashley does stay after she did this. Ashley so bad was holding, she was holding back. She really wanted to be shady and be messy about it, but she was like, no. And cause in her confessional, she states like, you know, she really is facing the gym and jail time. So I'm gonna leave it alone for now. Um, so yeah, so that's why Ashley, you didn't have Ashley really do anything at this moment. And then from there, um, we, Ashley then gets her hat, which is a cowgirl hat. And then we kind of talk about the Austin, Texas trip last year, which was a total flop and just, uh, but very Ashley. And then somehow the announcement of a GNA fusion brand is becoming a thing. And I ain't gonna hold you at this moment is where I really miss Candace. I miss Candace so bad because Wendy was the only one throwing the shade about it. And in previous seasons, she, like Wendy and Candace would have been the ones pointing out the com the comedy of Giselle and Ashley having a GNA fusion even though they have no fashions or nothing on her on their website. They're making Sheree like look like she is high in fashion in comparison. And like she is she has her stuff all the way together. Cause man, the way Giselle and Ashley was like hold our beer on being a hot mess when it comes to this fashion line. Yeah. Anyway. From there, then we see that um, Giselle gives her the hat, gives me the hat called the King. And it basically is like a pimp looking hat and it actually gives it, gives puts a hat on her head, having it tilted to the side. Um, basically alluding to the fact that she's basically pimping two men right now <laughs> at the moment, which 
that was kind of funny. She kind of is. And, and Mia owned it. And then Stacy, this whole entire time, because again, this is her first, this is Stacy's first interaction with this group. She is shocked this whole entire time, like, what is happening? <laughs> this is a lot going on. And then somehow the subject, this is when they ask, like, have you talked to Gordon? Are we going to start seeing Gordon around still with Mia? And she's like, yeah, Mia, you know, we're in a good place. Yada, yada, yada which we know that ain't true all the way because we literally saw that they're not still not really in a good place, but this is what she's telling the girls. And then she also mentions that, um, yeah, and, you know, we're basically just like this family. And to the point where Gordon, you know, last time he was there at, his, at her place watching the kids, he left his laundry, like left some dirty clothes there and, her and ink did the laundry and fold his clothes and underwear and then all the ladies are all like wait say what now you got your new man folding your old man's underwear <laughs> and i mean they all had this look me included i was like what <laughs> and then from there then jacqueline spills more tea not making it much better at all they're all just looking at this like this is wild um, Jacqueline's like, yeah, I think, um, they have, I feel like Gordon and her had more of like a business relationship versus like an actual romantic re relationship. Because the question, I think Stacey's the one who asked like how long we were married and they were married for like 11 years. And they're all questioning like, girl, that's cap. Cause you know, hello, like Mia be lying. Like she, she you know, she lies, she lies, she lies, she lies. And so they're just like, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. You, you, you've re, you, you have produced with him. That doesn't make any sense. Like they have kids. <laughs> and then from there, Karen takes it upon herself to ask the questions that we all want to know about how the kids are doing in all this. And once the kids got mentioned oh wow things got left really really quick got went left super quickly because both giselle and karen basically accused um mia of not um you know taking taking the children's um what what the impact of things are happening with Gordon doing all the things on social media and under and now that under consideration and basically not looking out for their kids best interests. And yes, Mia was rightfully so very offended. But I mean, they weren't. I mean, I hate to say this, but like, I was thinking that while I was watching the reunion too. like, you're putting a lot of personal business out there that the kids will, will, can now go back and watch. So, yeah, Karen and Giselle are not really wrong in this all the way, but Mia takes all kinds of offense to this. And then um, Wendy tries to be the mediator and they're like, yeah, because they're trying to, Mia's basically, Wendy's trying to stop them from asking more questions. Like, you brought the kids into this, don't do that. And Mia is storms out and basically says, don't follow me. She's really talking to the cameras and not to follow her. And then Jacqueline and Jazzy did follow her to console her. And the episode ends where Mia's like, close the door. I don't want them in here. And she's crying and breaking down. And that's where the episode ends. So, yeah, that was really shady of Karen. And Karen deflected like a mother. Because I'm pretty sure Karen did that because she does not want to talk about her situation. And... Giselle, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Giselle was not happy about how the reunion happened because basically Mia took her took her seat at the reunion. And as much as these housewives say that those seats don't matter, that is a lie. And also, too, because Mia did what she did, I mean, maybe there's, I don't know. I, I am questioning why. It was interesting that both um, Giselle and Karen were on the same page on going after Mia. And it, it made it for an interesting end of this episode. And so this was a pretty solid season premiere. Um, the way I would rate this in order, New York is still last. New York, y'all got some work to do. And then I would say this one is probably... 
I would give this like a B. It was a B. Um, so Salt Lake City was like an A for me. I'm sorry. And then um, same thing with OC. Both of them are A. And I would give this, actually, I would either give this an A minus or B plus. And New York, you're about a B minus C plus. So there's some work that needs to be done. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. Um, and you will see my pretty face again another time. But just, I, again, I was just not feeling it. And this is just a lot of shows to review. And so you're going to probably get more of these than, than anything because of the volume of how many shows now. But anyway, it's your girl Sharon, a.k.a. The Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.